Well, salutations, kindred spirits, greetings, and welcome back to another weekly Wednesday magic lesson. We're doing it again. That's what we do on Wednesdays. I do magic, and then I teach the magic, and I'm thinking a lot of you are going to be happy with this one as we're talking about a Monty routine. I've had a lot of requests, especially after my latest short, which is a version of the four-card Monty, and we'll talk more about the history in a moment, but let's take a look at the effect in question, the four-card Monty. Check it out. So this is more of a con game, yeah, a con game. It's called Chase the Ace. Normally it's played with four cards. In this demonstration, we're just gonna use three. And your job, if you choose to accept it, is indeed to chase that ace. And as they say in the biz, hey diddle diddle, it's the one in the middle. At least that's what the dealer wants you to believe. I mean, they'll show you, they'll show you it's not on the bottom, that it's not on the top. When you go to place your bet, that sure bet of the middle, well, that's a bet that's sure to lose. Yes, indeed, it's not here, here, or here. The nature of the money is it's always going to be the card that you least suspect. And with that in mind, watch very close and see if you can catch the exact instant I'm able to switch the ace from here over to there. Yeah, from here over to there. And once again, it's not here, here, or here. So now that you understand, we'll repeat the illusion under test conditions. One card going under the money, the ace goes in the middle, and you tell me, where would you bet? <clears throat> some would go here, some would go here, but almost everyone goes over here. And that brings us to the moral of the story. You never eat at a place called Mom's. You never play cards with a guy called Pops. And hey, a sucker and his money were lucky to find each other in the first place. All right, so that's my handling of the four card Monty, or more specifically, the Virginia City Shuffle. Yeah, this is a variant of a variant of a variant. And let's just discuss the whole history. This thing really starts with Ken Brook, an English magician, who was the first guy to do a three card Monty with four cards. He used two sets of duplicates. A few years later, Martin Lewis, a brilliant magician, would develop a routine that used aces that were mispipped. So like maybe there's no ace in this corner, or maybe no ace in this corner. And it's his version of the sidewalk shuffle that was one of the first versions of this in my repertoire. It'd be uh, many years later, I'd learn about Louis Falanga's version, and that really came through John Rockerbomber. His, uh, his handling Surreal Monty, which is in card fixes, was really the first version of this I did, but the one we're talking about today is more of a variation of a Bob King handily. And there's the four or five magicians that led up to this, starting with Ken Brook, Martin Lewis, Louis Falanga, John Rockerbomber, and Bob King. Open thanks to all the giants whose shoulders I stand upon. And with a little history out of the way, let's take a look at exactly how you might do this four card Monty. Okay, so here's how I handle Louis Falanga's Virginia City Shuffle. It's loosely based on that Bob King variant. You'll need three duplicate aces. These are regular cards, three dupes. You'll need a blank face card. Now, blank face cards, you can get these from your favorite magic dealer. You can get a whole deck of them, maybe seven or eight bucks. Or if you'd like to save some money, make your own. You can actually take an eraser and erase the pips on a card. Use an ace, there's only a couple pips. Take you just a few minutes and you'll end up with a blank card that looks just like that one. Now, the, the blank card is used along with this reverse fan situation to create the illusion that all of the cards are blank. So here I'm fanning the cards from right to left. If I fan them the normal way from left to right, you'll see those pips. But if I fan them the reverse way, this looks like a blank face packet. And this is a this is an old concept that you can even use with a deck of cards. Not the nine of diamonds though. If you if you put a card, a blank card on the face of the pack and do a reverse, like a reverse thumb spread, it will give you the illusion that the entire deck is blank. Yeah, works with the whole deck. Maybe you go from here and do a color change and print the pack and voila! All right, I'm rambling, getting, getting away from the subject matter at hand. Let's talk about the routine itself. So set up the routine with the blank card on the face of the packet. We're going to start with one ace in the right hand, and you'll want to start with the left hand packet uh, with that reverse fan so that you can show this situation. Three blanks and an ace. As you introduce, chase the ace, we're going to start by doing a double from the bottom, a double lift from the bottom. To do that, just pull the top card to the left slightly with your thumb, pinch everything below it, keep it square as you drag it to the right. When it clears the card, turn it face up to the packet, 
and that should look like you've just turned over a single card, but it's actually two cards, the blank card with the ace below it. This is a double lift from the bottom. Now, turn the double face down. There's options here. I use a thumb push off. So I just push off everything over the bottom card, which is the double. You could opt for a pinky pull down, pull down the bottom card and grab it that way. Some people will use a little buckle with the forefinger. There's options here, but I really like the cleanness of a block push off. Now take the top single card, which is an ace. Everyone thinks it's a blank card. Place it aside or under your coin. And then take the top card into the left hand and use the right hand packet to flip the ace over onto it. And then here's the grip. Your fingers are going to cover the index corner of this ace here as you show the packet in this fashion. So fingers cover the index corner, thumb on top. Now when you do this, we get a nice show of extra white with that ace in the center. This, this grip's actually tight. You can get this uh, display looking really good. It's this bottom corner that sells it, and again, the fingertips are just covering that index corner. So, you show the ace where it is. I like to do two reverse counts here, which is which does nothing, but it leads to the presentation of the three-card Monty where the dealer is shuffling the cards. However you do it, just make sure you have a, a blank card on the face as you begin the Anim and Chris alignment move. This is, this is what it looks like as you show it's not on the top, not on the bottom, not in the middle. This, and this is a move that many of you are familiar with, either through Color Monty or maybe the this and that trick. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this move as I have taught it before on other tutorials. Uh, briefly, this is the Anim and Chris alignment move. So once again, we've, we've shown the ace in the middle. We've done our reverse counts. One, two, three, one, two, three. When you're ready to show the ace is gone, flash the face of the packet, put it in dealing grip. Your first finger pulls back the uppermost card. Your second finger lands on the card below it and your thumb is at the inner end. Now your two fingers here push everything forward above the bottom card and then your thumb is going to butt up against that card effectively squaring the top and the bottom card, aligning the cards. This is the Anim and Chris alignment move and that's what allows you to pinch at the inner, inner end and do a double turnover onto the top of the pack. So it should just look like you turned over the top card, but you're actually turning the card from the bottom. And we're doing this as we tell them, yeah, it's not on the bottom. And the dealer also showed me that it's not in the top. Now we do a double turnover. Again, a block push off is what I recommend. And then we say, oh, it must be the card in the middle, but that's a bet, a sure bet that's sure to lose. Set the cards up in the reverse fan scenario with the fingertips covering the corners here. And then as you reveal this ace, flash the face of this fan, and now we're moving on to phase two. You can just repeat phase one. If you wanna do this trick and just repeat phase one a couple times, that's fine. I like to mix it up a little bit on the second one by using a rumba count, but this, this second round does start the same way. A double lift from the bottom, do the double push off, put it under the coin, take the blank card into your other hand as you square the packet. And here, what I do is try to create some suspicion. So I, I, I pretend like I'm palming, I touch here. I want the spectators to think maybe I've switched them in that action. And that's in preparation to show once again that ace is not here, here, or here. Or sometimes I'll show it this way. It's not here, it's not here, it's not here. And let me, let me show you how I do that, and then we'll move on to the final phase. So this is, this is Brother John Hammond's frustration count. If there's no tabletop available, I'll use this, just holding the hands and over, holding the cards in overhand grip, flashing the face of the packet, then turning it down and pulling the top card into your uh, receiving hand. If you do this quickly three times, you'll get that illusion of just three blank cards that is uh, solidified by using that reverse fan and then showing the uh, fan as you show the tabled ace where it could be. So that's, that's the frustration count. The rumba count is what I opted for. This is John Pierre Valerino's rumba count. Start with the packet face up, the blank card on the face of the packet. Your palm down right hand approaches this packet and grasp it with the thumb below, fingers above. And then your hand turns palm up. As it does that, your fingertips push everything above the top card to the left. So two bottom cards go to the left and it's those cards that are flipped face up into your hand. This is the rumba count action, palm down hand, Flipping it over, everything above the top card gets turned over, 
And if you repeat this illusion two times, you'll have what is effectively the rumba count. This is a very deceptive count that you can use in a lot of tricks. And for this one, we're gonna do that reverse fan again as we show the ace to be back under the coin. Now we're basically done. The last part of the trick is just a ruse. You're gonna turn the ace face down just so they're not sure where it's at. This time it looks like we do a double from the bottom, but you actually just turn over a single card. So go to the bottom of the packet, drag with your fingers, turn that card over. You might try and be fishy here as you want your spectators to think you're doing sleight of hand when you're really doing nothing. But put that blank card under, put this ace back in the packet. I don't show it because I don't want them thinking it's here. I want them to guess that it's over here. And then you can bring your Dana Uma. And note what I do here, as I made the coin disappear, I revealed this card. As I turn over this card to show the aces, what I do here is a lap. As I'm dragging the coin off the table, I lapped it. So I just let it fall off the table's edge, right? <clears throat> and then I pretended to place the coin in this hand. So after I did the lap, as I'm revealing the aces, I do this lap, then I pretend to put the coin over here. And then I show a sucker and his money were lucky to get together in the first place. Which is actually a Stanley Weiser line, but I heard it from Harry Anderson. That, that closing line, never eat at a place called Mom's, never play cards with a guy called Pops. A sucker and his money were lucky to get together in the first place. That's directly from Harry Anderson's Hello Sucker special. One of the all-time great views. If you haven't seen that, hey, check that out. Well, there you go, that's the scoop. And as mentioned, I learned this routine back in the 90s. It's been with me over 30 years. It served me well. I'm thinking if you learn it, it will do the same for you. And I'm gonna wish you the best with it. If you have any questions or comments, those are welcome in the comment section below. And hey, if you watch this far and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, now's the time to consider that. I'll thank you for that as well. It's thanking you for your time and energy. It's always appreciated. And that's gonna be a wrap. I'll see you on the next one. So long.